Good Tuesday morning, my friends. It's Tuesday. It's August 11th, and we're here. And I'm sure we have quite the large crowd already because we are joined today by our good friends from Google. Brian from Google, give us a little wave there. Show everybody who you are. He's the he's kind of the famous one on the stream today. We also have Jen and Ryan who are who are also YouTube famous for Canvas <laughs> and Cat Flippin, who you all know. <laughs> Kat is, is one of our favorite Canvas advocates, uh, has been on these streams many times, and is a massive fan of both Google and Canvas. We made a big announcement today. I'm going to hand it over to Jen and Ryan to talk about that announcement and, and go through. Remember, we want to know who you are. Uh, drop it in the comments, where are you from, um, and we'll, have, we'll be answering questions for the next 30 minutes to an hour. Thanks, everybody. Jen and Ryan. Thanks, Mark. This is big news. This is exciting stuff. I am super excited about this. Um, so today we just announced um, the integration with uh, Google Assignments into Canvas LMS. So, <laughs> so that means that, so right now we're the only LMS that has that, which is so cool. And it, it's really going to help um, teachers and professors distribute uh, customer assignments, uh, grade those assignments, and make the, the whole process a lot smoother, whether students are learning in the classroom or at home. Yep, and this is something we've been working on for quite a while. Um, we're, we, we've been chomping in the bit to announce it, and I'm excited to have Brian Shirley is gonna walk us through it, but um, this replaces the existing uh, Google uh, LTI integration, and so that will be end of life to, uh, at some point down the road, um, but this is much more powerful, much tighter integration. Everything about it really is designed to streamline um, the, the experience of teachers and students and make, make their lives easier. Uh, and so, uh, like I said, we've, we've actually completed a successful beta program. There's a number of institutions that have already been working on that and helping us improve that. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a, there's a little video available out on the blog that you can actually see a little bit more about it, um, as well as the press release. And I, I assume that's why so many people are on this morning and some of you have already seen that. Um, but we do want, we want to pass it off to Brian from Google and have him give us a little bit of insight on the, the integration itself and maybe show us uh, how that works. Great, thanks all. And you can show my, my screen as I walk through this. Uh, so I'm Brian Hendricks, I'm the product manager for Google Assignments. I've been working with Canvas for, for a while to um, have a successful beta program, get this out the door. And so today it's now generally available for all G Suite for Education customers and available for all Canvas customers to integrate within, within Canvas. Uh, so if you've heard of Google Assignments before, maybe you knew it was in beta, uh, we first launched that last year. Um, now, if you, if you had that, had that installed, um, it's, it's available for, for you to, to do so. And I'll walk you some of the, the newest features of the product as, as well. Um, so uh, if, you, if you haven't heard of it before, Assignments is a application for LMSs, for Canvas. It's a, it's a way to simplify distribution, collect the analyze the student work all through the power of G Suite, and kind of three, three key elements of that. One, uh, integrating G Suite into your LS, so into Canvas, um, so you get the best of, of Google Docs and Drive right within, within Canvas. It helps with distribution and grading work, so you can save time distributing worksheets, collecting them, grading them, and then we also have our originality reports feature to help analyze student work and ensure that they're, they're authentic, and so I'll, I'll walk through those things. Yeah. So the, the agenda for, for this call, um, I'll, I'll quickly summarize the, kind of the key three use cases of, of assignments within Canvas. I'll, I'll do some demos, we'll walk through it, um, just do a, a, a quick recap of what I showed, and then um, we'll kind of just share how to get started, and we'll do go Q&A from, from there. So the, the three use cases for assignments and the ways to get the, the most out of them, kind of three placements of it. The, the first and foremost, the, the core one is um, using the Google Assignments as an external tool um, as a submission type. So you go in there and, and you uh, create a new assignment, you change the submission type to external tool, select Google Assignments, and it allows you to, uh, to use our, our integration to distribute and collect student work. The, the second use case is for instructors to embed Google Drive files uh, using the rich text editor. So you go in, select Google Drive, and you can embed doc sheets, slides, sites, PDFs, anything from your Google Drive can be embedded into uh, the rich text editor for announcements and discussions and assignments and like that. And then the third use case is for students. So when instructor creates a standard Canvas assignment, um, the online submission type and selects file uploads, students can submit Google Drive files easily from, from there. 
And as, as Ryan mentioned, this is, this is also all about replacing the Google Apps LTI tool that had been around for a couple of years. Uh, so this is now the official integration for Google into, into Canvas. Uh, and that old Google Apps LTI integration will be deprecated in September of 2021. So really encouraging everybody to get started using assignments today. So with that, I will switch over to, to de demo those three, three use cases. Um, we'll, and we'll kind of go in, go in order of, of the three that I, I shared. So the, the first one, uh, using assignments as your, your submission type. So here I am within uh, Canvas as an instructor. I'll go to my class, go create a new assignment. I have the submission type set as external tool. So find, select Google Assignments. It'll ask you to confirm which Google account you want to use, and it's it's available for all G Suite for Education accounts. Continue to open up the, the creation screen and a few things to point out. First, there's uh, an option to turn on originality reports or plagiarism detection. So it analyzes Google Docs for miscitation and possible plagiarism. Uh, it scans hundreds of billions of web pages and 40 million books to, to give a sense of um, where students might have, might have missed their citation or potentially took some stuff from the web. And I'll, I'll do a demo of that as we get, go further along. Um, the files feature, for those of you who've used Google Cloud assignments in the past, and um, this is the, the similar use case for that. So I can go in and select a, um, a doc sheet slide, whatever I'd like from a Google Drive. Uh, it's now going to make a, a copy for each student to be able to edit and turn in. I can set the due date um, and then also uh, add a rubric. These are rubrics from Google Assignments. They're not from Canvas, but there is a way where you can um, add those to Google Sheets and import them so, so you can easily reuse those. Um, but I have a whole bunch of rubrics I can take and add in, um, and it will do that. So I all set up. I create the assignment, finish and publish. I'll actually go ahead and also make that due date as well. And at this point, the assignment's ready to go and you're just waiting for students to submit their work. Uh, so here it's just waiting for me to turn something in. Um, so I'm gonna go switch over to my student view and uh, open up uh, that assignment. And we have a good yeah. question. Um, and I was actually writing this down as well. So those of us who already had the, the yep. data set up, do we have to do anything with it, or is it already in place, or will those assignments they, be affected? They will not be affected. If you've already been using uh, assignments, that was, we had it as LTI 1.1. Um, we now have it as an LTI 1.3 integration. So um, your admin might want to upgrade. We do we do encourage that, um, but it's not required for right now. Um, if there's some documentation in our help center that if you do want to upgrade, um, there's, you might actually see duplicate installations um, and there's some help center documentation on, on how you can hide the old installation. Um, so it's not duplicated, but it won't act, it won't break or affect your, your old ones. Uh, Perfect. Be the, same, the same for yeah. the docs. Um, and to that point. Too, go ahead, Ryan. Sorry, uh, there's actually all that documentation is actually posted on the Canvas community with links out to the, the Google admin site. So um, we're trying to make it as easy as possible to get that info, but check the community. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. So as a student, here I am, uh, Anna, she has this template already available uh, with her name on it and the name of the file. She can go in and edit it. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, just drop something in quickly. Go back over here. Um, she can see the, the rubric and kind of the grading criteria for the work. And then to submit, you just have to open it up over here. Um, she can use originality reports. Um, so it's turned on for the assignment, students get three runs where they can check their work against the, the web as well. Um, shouldn't get any matches here given, given what I wrote, but um, they were informed that there are no, no matches there. So they can up, open up that report, um, add additional files, as well as create new doc sheets or slides as well, which would have their, their name uh, and then the assignment title automatically created as well. Um, give that a second. So when I go ahead and submit, um, what we do is take the, the assignment, we actually transfer the editing 
permissions over to the instructor so students can no longer edit it after it's turned in and and then instructors are able to to go and grade um, i'm going to go back to our instructor um, i'm actually going to open up a um, a second assignment sorry this is the one we was just did but i'm going to open up one with a few more submissions um, so anna bobby and charlie they they submitted the assignment earlier and you can see that there's some um, flag passages from the originality reports that are available. You also see when it was submitted, as well as whether it's been, been great or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Anna's submission. Uh, so here you have the, the Google Assignments grade interface. Um, so one thing, a common question we frequently get is, is what about SpeedGrader? Um, so this interface is, is unique to, to Google Assignments and uh, really is for helping grade Google Docs and Sheets and Slides really well. Um, we will have an option uh, coming in the fall where you can choose to grade within SpeedGrader if you'd like. Um, but the, the, core, the core assignments workflow right now, you are grading within the, the Google uh, Docs experience. Uh, so some of the, the benefits of that, though, um, if I go in and take a, take a look, I can make suggestions. Um, and if I want to highlight things, bold things, um, it's all through Google Docs suggest mode. Um, so all of these edits or suggestions, the student won't see any of that until it's returned back to them. Uh, and you can use all of the, the rich power of Google Docs sheets and slides to, to give really rich feedback to, to students, including comments, uh, margin comments. So instructors have their own personalized common bank of frequently used comments that, that they have available to them. So you can save some time uh, dropping in margin comments um, and you can manage that through your, your comment bank over here. Uh, and it'll also suggest to you comments as you, as you type. Can easily mark up the, the rubric uh, and it'll auto calculate your score for you. And then with the originality reports feature, uh, you can open up and see that there was where those flag passages were coming from. Uh, in this case, I, I took this work from Google Arts and Culture, um, but it'll give you a summary of where there was some uh, kind of duplicate passages and where, where that came from. All right, Brian, I want to interject just one moment. Uh, really yeah. quick, uh, people just from a question, someone, you don't need to set it up again, so everything will be smooth. Just talk to your admin on the instructions they were talking about that got posted here too. Um, and I do want to point out for my classroom people who are Google Classroom, this is Google Classroom essentially, but it's just in Canvas. And now it's officially pushed out with an LTI, so you can push that out to your entire Canvas institution really easily and use it already integrated. So it's pretty phenomenal. This is awesome. Thanks, Kat. And I'll hop over to Bobby, um, similar thing. Um, he has a couple flag passages and a uh, unique thing about, about Bobby's report um, it's also showing that there's a match within um, within my domain, so our, our past student submission. Um, this this feature is for G Suite Enterprise for Education customers, but it is a, a premium upgrade. Um, but it's a way where you can can look at past student submissions. So that's a, a brand new feature that um, is now available, um, and we we're announcing that today as well. Uh, so you have uh, school matches, and then the other thing I wanted to show within our grade interface. Uh, is it supports all types of, of Google Docs files. Um, so here's Charlie, in addition to the, the Google Docs, he submitted a, a sheet, a slide, um, a Google Sites file. Um, so you can really kind of get, for example, really good for student portfolios or, or rich creative work, um, as well as a, a Google drawing um, or a Jamboard. Uh, to, so all different types of file types, and it supports multiple at a time. Uh, the previous Google Apps LTI tool and for Google Cloud Assignment was only some, uh, supporting one file at a time, but you can, if you want to have multiple um, parts to the assignment, that, that works as well. Uh, yeah. Hey, Brian, let's take a quick pause here and answer this question from Ellen on Facebook, who's asking, our district has set up our Canvas assignment linked to our grade book. Will this affect uh, that? Well, it will. That was the next part of my demo, uh, actually. So when you enter a grade, so I'll do 75 out of 100 here, and I go and return it, um, and you can return multiple at a time. Um, it's not gonna take that 75 out of, out of 100 and send it back to the LMS gradebook, to the to Canvas's gradebook. So you don't have to copy and paste it. It automatically does that, as well as it'll return the work back to the student. Um, 
So I did that. I'm going to go back over here, go into the grade book, and then that 75 out of, out of 100 is already there. Uh, so uh, I believe that was the spirit of the question, um, but the the LTI connectivity will will bring that grade back to the to Canvas and Gradebook. Awesome, thank you. Uh, and then to, to kind of go back to what Anna sees, um, she sees that it was it was graded. Um, can go in there and and also view her um, her score and the specifics of of her rubric criteria. Um, and with that, that's the that's the first use case for assignments, um, which is again using it as a as an external tool uh, type for a uh, an assignment. The second thing I wanted to show you is embedding Google Docs files or Drive files into the rich text editor. Um, so this works across an announcements, modules, discussions, all anywhere you have this rich text editor. Um, I'm going to go in here, just generically name it. Um, and then there's the, the apps icon in the, the rich text editor here. Click that, and then you'll choose Google Drive. It'll ask me to just confirm the account I want to use, and then I can pull anything from my Google Drive and embed it into uh, the rich text editor. We'll choose this one. Um, I'll demo a couple, but, but it takes that Google, Google Doc uh, and embeds it right within there. Um, and we'll do another one real quick. And while he's doing that, let me emphasize, it does do grade passback. So it, while you don't use the speed grader, it has like the Google Classroom version of speed grader, essentially. And it'll pass back into the gradebook, which then if you have it set up with your student information system, it'll pass back into that as well. Yep, thanks, Kat. I just want to reiterate that you do not have to copy and paste things. It is um, when you're using assignments for, for grading. Um, you type in that grade once and send it back. You don't have to do it twice. Um, and and something that we, we as I mentioned, we are working on is that if you do prefer the speed grader interface, um, as opposed to the assignments grading interface that we were showing, we will have that option for you later in the fall. Um, and as you're going up and saying that the assignment, when you configure the due date, the points, the rubric, the file, there'll be an option to um, choose between do you want to grade it in assignments or, or speed grader. Uh, so here I have a few files embedded within, uh, within Canvas. I have a Google Doc as well as a Google Slides. I can kind of browse through it. Um, one of the, the key improvements that, that we've made for um, assignments relative to the Apps LTI tool is that actually this works really well for any parent observer. So if you're anybody else in the class who might not have a, uh, a Google account to log into, um, they don't actually have to log in before seeing this, this file. It is um, limited to, to those in the class, but you don't actually have to, to log in first. And we, we found that it was a, a common complaint. Um, and, and so really good for um, any other potential observers in, in that class. Um, so again, works well with all Google Drive file types. Um, and we've, we've also seen it frequently used with modules where instructors can create sequential um, documents to view and then do an assignment and go in from there. Um, so really, really powerful integration on, with that. Um, the, the last thing I want to show um, is the online file uploads um, for, for Google Drive. Uh, and in this case, this is if you're using, instead of the external tool submission type, you're just using uh, the online submission type and then choosing file uploads. Um, and then create that assignment. Um, hop back over to my student. Open up the new assignment, go to submit. Uh, and then there's the Google Drive option here. Um, and so you can submit your work um, to that. And it's just a way to, to really easily go into your Google Drive, choose a file you want to upload, uh, and then it'll take this, um, just giving it temporary access for Canvas to go, go grab and upload, submit it. And it's going to send that over to, to Canvas. Um, hop back over here. Uh, and you can view that file within within SpeedGrader. Um, so if you if you do want to have have SpeedGrader, that's that's how you can do that um, right now. Uh, and when we have the option to 
uh, grade within assignments or speed grader, it's kind of blending together these these two use cases into to one option within mm -hmm. assignments. Yeah. So uh, those are the the three use cases: external tool, the rich text editor, and then the the homework submission file uploads. Um, let me go back to to my slides for a minute. Um, a, a really quick quick recap of of what I was just just showing. Uh, so assignments. Great for enhancing Canvas with, with the power of G Suite. It helps simplify your assignment workflow. Um, another um, thing about assignments relative to the Google Apps LTI tool is that G Suite administrators can restrict student submissions to their school issued Google accounts. Um, that was a, um, we'd heard from, from schools who were saying that students were using their, their Gmail um, accounts to submit. Um, this is a, a feature of Google Assignments where admins can, can restrict it to their school issued accounts as well. Um, and it's built with the, the latest versions of, of LTI. Uh, you can distribute and share classwork with students using personalized Google Drive templates, works with any file format submitted in Google Drive, uh, and um, you can automatically uh, generate unique classwork for, for each student. Uh, you'll have a, a really rich interface for seeing when students submitted originality reports and status of, of those submissions. It'll uh, limit the, the visibility of any feedback and grades until student work is returned. Uh, and then we use, uh, we manage Google Drive permissions so that after students submit their work, they can't edit it after the fact. Um, so it's it's all, all done automatically for you. We have a, a really rich grade interface uh, using the power of, of the Google Docs editors. Uh, and you have uh, those rich margin comments as well as your, your personalized comment bank of, of frequently used comments to use. So you can save time kind of if you're giving the same feedback over and over again. Rubrics, really powerful. Uh, you can reuse them, you can share them using Google Sheets and you can upload new ones. Uh, so there's it's really nicely integrated within your, your grading interface. And then we have our originality reports feature, which uh, is really helpful for helping students kind of improve their work before they turn in, as well as uh, helping ensure authenticity and um, academic integrity of the work. Um, so our, our theory here is that if we can help students kind of spot cite, miss citations and help their work before they turn in, it'll save instructors time on grading so they're not getting some of those, those flag passages uh, later on. And then uh, a feature that we have available starting today, uh, you can save and share and print out those reports. We have a nice uh, uh, downloadable version of those originality reports if you do want to share it with parents or other teachers or administrators as, as needed. Uh, and then Assignments is, is built for really strong accessibility, security, and compliance. Uh, it's FERPA compliant, COPPA compliant. Um, the, the G Suite for Education in terms of service adheres to um, the Student Privacy Pledge, um, which is a really robust set of promises and commitments that we make around how we handle student data. It's LTI 1.3 certified. And then starting today, it, it's covered by the G Suite for Education in terms of service as a, as a core service. Um, so it kind of meets all the really robust security um, and and data handling standards that we have for all of our G Suite products. And then it's eligible for, for G Suite support. And as mentioned earlier, um, only Canvas customers are able to call into to G Suite support um, for administrators to, to get help in, installing and troubleshooting. So that's um, that's a special benefit for, for Canvas customers today. That's Ryan amazing. and Jen are not, are not smiling because they're a little bit proud of that and happy that <laughs> that's the case. I don't know if you could see that, but... Would you want to repeat that last part just once yes. more, Brian? <laughs> uh, happily to. Uh, so if, you're, if, if your G Suite administrator runs into trouble get, getting uh, assignments up in Canvas, only Canvas customers are able to call G Suite support. Um, we've trained our, our support team on, on how to get started with Canvas so they can work, work through those common issues. Perfect. I have right, just a really quick interjection, if y'all don't mind. Sure. Some people are asking, because um, right now it's the beginning of the school year, and so people are worried about copying courses. So when you call, you be aware when you do this, you know in classroom it creates a folder in your Google Drive. You'll have a folder in your Google Drive that'll be called assignments essentially. And in there you'll have your template documents, all the documents throughout the year. So when you copy stuff over from course to course, so when you go from like last year's course to this year's course, those assignments will copy over, right? You'll go and you'll authenticate your Google account for the first time, you gotta upload something for the first time and just kind of connect your Google account with Canvas. And then uh, you'll be able to pull those template documents really easily back in. So um, we're doing this right now in our system, and it's pretty seamless once you get the hang of that. So that's a great point. And at this point, Kat knows more about this than I do. It's really actually pretty <laughs> impressive. I was going through your answers. I was like, "Wow, all right." 
Um, <laughs> But so people know too. We've we've actually got some tutorials. This this will be recorded, so we, you'll have Brian's um, overview here. But we're also going to have tutorials that are be available in the community. Um, we've got this video, so that as you, I think um, Felipe actually posted in there. Wow, I can actually get my my teachers to switch over to Canvas. I think a lot of times, what there's a perception that I have, I use Canvas or Google, and what we really wanted to make sure is that people understand the power of those together is is really. Um, uh, greater than the sum of its parts, really. Uh, and so uh, use the video. It'll be available on the blog. It'll be posted to all of our social channels. Use that to get teachers to understand the vision and, and how it can be used together as well. So to, to get started, um, it's really easy, uh, though your Canvas admin will have to have to do it. Uh, so step one, uh, if, when they log in as, a, as administrator, there's a section called developer keys. Go in there. It's already pre Figure they just do have to turn it from off to on, um, and that will enable this um, this key to actually work. And then step two is to to go add Google Assignments as an LTI app to your your courses. It's super easy. You copy and paste that number. Uh, you go and add a new new app. Select client ID as the configuration type, and just copy and paste that in there, and then you're good to go. Uh, there's really no way to to mess that up, um, and and so it takes. 30 seconds, just you have to, to get your admin to go in and flip that on. Um, and also for any any admins that are on the call, um, it is a pure vanilla LTI installation. There's no APIs. Um, so it's, it's all really robust um, and, and doesn't use any extra um, API keys or anything like that. So it's a really, really safe and secure to, to use. Um, and I also wanted to, to do a plug for uh, the Anywhere School today, which is uh, Google's back to school event, our virtual back to school event that's happening um, at 12 Mountain Time, um, so in a couple hours. Uh, and you can register for free at uh, geo.gle slash the Anywhere School. You can learn more about assignments and all of Google's announcements today as well. Um, it's, a, it's a really um, big set of things and, and a lot of exciting stuff happening. Um, so I encourage anyone watching this to, to also hop over and watch that as well. And awesome. That, so let's take... Brian, let's take some questions. Ryan, I know that you had talked about tutorials earlier. Uh, Tolan is asking us here, when will tutorials be available? They are available. And I was actually looking to see if they were on the community post. And I don't see them. So I'm actually going to drop them into the comments section. Um, can I do that? <laughs> yeah, just put up. Put them in that private chat, and I'll throw them in, Ryan. OK, perfect. Um, they're on YouTube, and they're, they went live today. Um, but we'll also get those posted to the uh, the community page as well. And let me drop that link into the community post so people are seeing that as well. We are dropping, as we speak, there are three YouTube links that everybody should be seeing now. Um, those are to the tutorials, so go check them out, share them with your team. What else? There was a question here earlier. If you have more questions, we've had about 5 million come in, so feel free to pop them in again. Let's give you an, an easy softball one, Brian. Uh, there was a question that came in from uh, Julian. My colleagues came a little late. Is this new ability free? Yes. So uh, it, G Suite for Education, um, it, it's free, and um, assignments is, is part of that. So it, it's free to install. Um, I, uh, I will call out that there is an upgrade for our originality reports feature if you want um, kind of the school matches feature that we have. Um, but you, you do get um, some originality reports for, for free as well. Um, and it's and everything else, it's free too. Awesome. I want to actually, ahead, I want to mirror uh, or, or repeat uh, Beth's, Beth Crook's uh, comment. Thank you, Google. Uh, you know, we really do appreciate all the work that the Google team has done uh, with our team here at, at Canvas to get this done. Brian Lawrence, who's who's on the behind the scenes here, and their team at Google really has been an amazing partnership. And working with them has been a pleasure. Um, we got to spend a little time with them last year at Educause at, at our part joint party and things there. So um, this team's great, and and we're just going to continue to to see this partnership grow. I'm excited. Ryan, let's take this comment from YouTube from Nicole. Can you please demo how a teacher can jump onto a student's document before they submit it and give feedback as they're working on it? Sure. Um, let me configure that up again. Um, so that's cool. And I know that they're constantly doing a lot of improvements. Like for a while, it wasn't popping up on the to-do list, but now it's popping up on your to-do list. So you know, they're just 
with the growth of the LTI, there's all these changes coming in. And I'll say this also for both Canvas and Google, you guys take amazing feedback and actually make that stuff happen. We we do. I'll do a, I'll do a plug for that uh, real quick. Um, so anytime you're in Google Assignments, there's the report issue and request feature um, that you can pull up the screenshot. Um, and we read those things every day. Uh, and a lot of the um, the features that we've built and so something like that around um, connecting and showing that on the to-do to list came from uh, these reports. So anytime you run into something and you have a feature request, we really encourage you to um, go in here. It's it's kind of like a voting system for us. Um, the more we hear the feedback, the, the quicker we can act on it. Um, so thank you, thank you, Kat. Sure. Um, I'm gonna go and actually just unsubmit um, this this work for a second. Um, that was a question too about the unsubmitting. And so that, that, that killed two birds with one stone right there. So, yes, it did. <laughs> so you, you can unsubmit up until the, the due date. Um, so if you submit it, um, one of the, there, there's kind of two ways where you can see in, in progress work. Um, one is more formally, where if you ask the students to submit a draft before they, um, before it's actually due, um, and, and that'll um, notify the instructor as well. Um, but once it's, so if, August 12th at midnight, um, the, the student can no longer um, unsubmit. But I just wanted to get that file back into um, uh, to that state. So I'm going to go back over here um, and do should show me that it's not there. OK. So the, the way in which you see files before students turn in their work, um, I'm going to go hop over to my Google Drive. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I have this set up already where um, it just I, I put that file that folder in my home drive, but you'll normally see um, it in your assignments list here. Um, so uh, I can just go in here. You'll see all the all the in progress work that's that's available. Uh, and so here's that same file we were just looking at, um, but you can access all of that in progress work um, through your through your Google Drive by going to the assignments folder. Um, then the, the class that's in, and then um, assignments. Right, and I think that question also uh, brought up, I think Nicole, at some point, you brought up the whole ownership piece. So the nice thing, just like classroom, you own the document. So even if the student somehow deletes the document, you still have access to that. And if, if you want to be able to see those documents before they have that initial submission, I'm telling y'all, use what Brian was talking about. Submit those suggestions, because they take them very seriously, and they'll, they'll work on that. I'll, I'll also show that, so if the student, for example, um, you know, when, they, when they get that file um, in, their, in their submission, if they accidentally remove it or delete it from the, um, from the submission, they'll actually really easily be able to um, request a, a, a new copy uh, and it'll, it'll connect it back together. Um, so it, it's there. So if, in case students mess that up, uh, we've we solved their, that, that issue here. So Brian, going along with that, Nicole's asking another question here. If I return an assignment and they need to revise it, do I need to create a new assignment for revision submissions or can they simply resubmit after the due date? They can They can simply resubmit. Um, so you can't unsubmit after the due date, but you can resubmit once it's returned turn back to you. Um, so doing multi-step assignments or drafts and final versions, um, that's all really easy with, with assignments. Interesting comment here from our friend Kat. Um, I, I think that there's a lot who are who are still maybe thinking, well, it's 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 Google versus Canvas, and that is 100% not the case. Kat, may, maybe talk about your comment here and talk about why you're excited for it. Sure. And someone, I mean, someone above also said, like, if we don't have Google, uh, if we can this be done with Classroom instead of Assignments? So understand that Google Assignments is specifically built to be part the, to partner as an LTI tool, and this is specifically right now with Canvas, right? So um, you can't access this except without having Canvas access. It's essentially that piece of classroom that we love, but it's driven from within Canvas. Just like if you use Edpuzzle or any other LTI tool, just like that. Um, so that's why someone who thought that it was like a, like a different piece, I think um, Brandy, you said like it's a little different from Google Classroom. We have access in the, to the in-progress through Drive and not through Canvas. No, you actually do see the progress within Canvas um, so you have access to both, which is kind of the beauty of Classroom, too, is you have access to both. So it's a wonderful yes and solution. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to show, so going back to um, that assignment that we returned to the student, um, and 
it doesn't matter if it's if it's with a grade or no grade, but there is so it's return return back, but there's a resubmit um, option. Um, so if there's any feedback or you return with just a hey, I, I you know I'd like you to uh, you know address this, uh, there is that that resubmit option. Uh, so hope that answers that that question as well. And and Brian, we've had a number of questions on Google Forms, and I actually don't know where we stand. So uh, can you embed a Google Form in an assignment and have the score for that? Pass back to the Canvas gradebook. Uh, no, um, that that is something that is not yet a feature. Um, so oftentimes you're trying to um, maybe use it as a quiz. Mm -hmm. uh, we we don't yet support embedding a Google form in the rich text editor. Um, and then mm -hmm. students who submit a Google form, it's not actually submitting the um, the quiz results. It actually submit the file. So it's like if if part of the assignment is to create a survey, for example, that will work. But if it's to fill out a um, a Google Forms quiz that that is not yet a feature of um, of assignment. But something to add to our list. That's awesome. Yeah. Brian, let's take this question from Gregory, who's one of our Canvas admins. If if we've been using Google assignments, and I know you already talked about this in our pro in in the beta production environment, do they need to remove it and install the new version? You you do not have to. Um, it's so the, the the old beta was based off of LTA 1.1. Uh, what we have in general availability now is, is we have an LTA 1.3. Um, some of the the new features that we'll add kind of later in the fall um, that will be for the LTA 1.3 use case. But you don't have to upgrade immediately. Uh, so there's no no rush. You don't have to do it for for back to school. Um, and and once you're once you do want to upgrade to LTA 1.3, um, there's some support documentation on, on how you do that. Um, so you don't have duplicate installations, but but there is no requirement that you do do so. Love this comment from our friend Tolan. Thank you, Canvas. No more classroom versus Canvas. Love that comment. Yes. Okay. Along those lines, someone asked, oh, will, will we be able to use this uh, if we have Google Classroom but not assignments? So no. So Google Classroom inherently does not connect to, to Canvas, right? So you have to have that connection with the Google Assignments LTI. But I, by the way, I just checked my admin console while y'all were talking, and it's there. So that's awesome. Excellent. Let's talk about originality reports because there's been some questions about this, Brian. Nicole's asking, are teachers still limited to three originality reports? Um, so teach, So if you have G Suite for Education, um, teachers are still limited to a limited number of reports. Um, we actually are, are raising that to five. Um, so the, the number will go up a little bit um, for this back to school, but it is a, a limited number. Thank you. Ryan and Jen, let's have you take take this one because I know how much time you get to spend with with free for teacher. There was a question about anything with free to te free for teacher and and this integration. Is there anything happening there? What what should people know? No, I am I am not entirely sure. Um, I I would need to check on that, but I'm happy to get it um, in some of the comments and in the community so that there's clarification about that. Yeah, and, and generally we limit some of the functionality in Free for Teacher, but I think if we have enough interest, we would something we'd probably pursue. So, Brian, it looks like you should maybe win a Nobel Peace Prize because of raising that to five. We've got <laughs> Beth here who's giving you, Beth's one of our good friends, saying thank you for five. Nicole, thank you for five. So so big steps in the right direction, everybody. We uh, that's another another feature thing that happened because of the report issue or request feature option. We heard that just going from three to five can make a really big difference. Awesome. Other questions, Jen, Ryan, Kat, that we want to make sure we get Brian to answer. You know, I I was just so excited watching Kat nod and smile away. Like it's oh, this is really exciting news, and I know there's a lot of educators that are excited about it. And I was just going to ask Kat, like, what's the one kind of game changer for you as going into fall around this release? Well, I always believe that you know technology breaks down the barriers to instruction. And teachers, we don't have time to do that admin stuff, the stuff where we have to put kids in and take kids out or worry if anything's thinking right. And Canvas helps solve that problem. And yeah, Classroom, I think, has a sync, but Canvas has the ability to cross list. Classroom doesn't. So you still have all your bazillion sections. Like it just gets way too convoluted. You have grade pass back. This helps enable that grade pass back too. So no more USB key, right? I remember those. I had one. It was blue. A USB um, like just keypad. So you don't have to do that with the grades anymore either. It's all about making your life easier and streamlining everything. So having this 
I mean, I, having it already in my system as a beta is phenomenal, but having this now at the LTI 1.3 and having it officially being pushed out is, is a wonderful thing. And it makes your life with Canvas and with G Suite that much easier. Brian, another question for you. Is there a way to import my comment bank from Google Classroom and use it in Canvas, or does that need to be rebuilt? Oh, um, it actually, you should actually already see it there. Um, so it, it, it is um, kind of one the same. It's, but if you do not for some reason, um, you can actually just copy and paste um, your, your list, um, and you can import you know, hundreds at a time. Uh, and there is some also documentation in the in our health center um, on, on how to do that if if you weren't following along. Um, but you can you can just easily import it. Awesome. Uh, there's been some questions. I think somebody may have seen a little of this on your desktop, Brian. And so now there's questions. Any integration? Uh, I I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> it's a graphing calculator app. It, you can log in with Google. Um, I don't. I, I think they're asking about maybe a Canvas integration with that. So I'm not sure. Oh no, not, nothing else. All right, Sorry, Ali, Sally. You're fine. I'll take a question from Brandy because it's something that we're actively doing right now. So she asked, um, "How does this work if I cross with my courses? Can I still view them for section?" So. Kind of, sort of, yes. Like It depends on how you assign it. You can assign it just to individual sections and that will roll out. But just like with Classroom, you're limited where you can't view in specific sections unless you set up groups ahead of time. Um, that's how many people you'll be able to see. But in that drop down interface, it's almost just like Speed Grader again, but just for Classroom, the assignments feature, right? Um, you'll have that drop down. You can fly through and easily see who's there. So if you have a class of 52, it's still doable. And if you cross list, you can always split up your assignments and make one like this is for my first period, this is for my second period, just to make it more manageable for yourself. Yeah, and in quick response to Toland uh, Flood who asked about the integration piece, there is a step-by-step -step integration instructions on the community and I, we shared that link just a little while ago. Um, so it's all out there. Go to the community, uh, go to any of the social channels, they're linking to that one stop kind of for all this information. And ask questions, I'm telling you all these people, the reason I, I don't back everybody as a vendor or an ed tech person, I back stuff that as a teacher that I would love and as an admin, I really, really love and who are very good people too. That matters to me. Ethics and friendliness matter. These people are that. So as, send feedback. They will respond even if they have to say the same thing to a bazillion people. They will do it happily. You're awesome, Kat. Go back to the, the question about the comment bank if you had in classroom, my, my team had just before me. Um, th those those comp banks are the same. So if you were using the comp bank in classroom and then you're now grading with assignments in uh, in Canvas, you'll have the exact same comp bank. You don't have to import them at all. Oh, that's wonderful. That's good, awesome. good question. Ryan, what about this one? What's the best way for students to collaborate with Google Apps inside of Canvas? So there's the the uh, collaborations feature within within Canvas. Um, that is a feature that's not yet on Google Assignments, but it, we are we are adding that later in the fall. Um, so it's a one-to-one -one replacement with the Google Apps um, LTI tool. Um, but there's the it's so on the left-hand nav. It's collaborations, and you can go in and create a new doc sheet, slide, um, drawing, etc. Sites with with students in the class. But we will have that that feature. Awesome. Let's take this one from Winnie. Winnie's one of our regulars. Hey, Winnie, how are you? We're preparing right now to pay to upgrade to Google Suite Enterprise. Um, will we get more originality reports with an upgrade? Yes. So with G Suite Enterprise for Education, um, you go from a limited number of reports to unlimited, so a limited number of assignments per, per class. Uh, and then you also get the, the school matches feature so that it'll check for past student submissions um, as well as anything from the, the web. Boom. You're welcome, Winnie. You are welcome. Let's see, what else are we missing here? Anything else, uh, Ryan, Jen, Kat, that you want to ask Brian? It's not very often we get Brian on a call like this just to field any question we ask him. <laughs> what are, all right, well, all right, so Google friend, what's coming next? Like if, if there, would there be a potential forms integration or at least like an import option or could there be something that is the next step that none of us can really envision that's in mind for this? Uh, I, I don't have anything to, 
to share about, about that. I think the, the team's working right now on getting that speed grader option ready to go. Um, so that's something that's, that's coming in the fall as well as uh, supporting Canvas collaborations. And then we're also going to support extra credit and ungraded assignments as those are two things that are, are new to the LTI capabilities. Um, and, and then another thing we're working on is how do we make sure um, as you go from say semester to semester and using Blueprint courses, making sure that's a really rich integration as well. We've got a couple of questions on um, uh, Google Sites embedding in pages. Um, so that that works. Um, if, if the question was, can you embed a Google site? Um, can, you can embed that into the the rich text editor or into an announcement or things like that. Um, so really rich way to to share class materials or any information about um, a project or things like that. Um, so the the mantra is any file that can be stored within Google Drive can be embedded within within Canvas, um, including images, videos, PDFs, um, what have you. Awesome. We have we have a special request here from Beth Crook. Beth gets what she wants because she's that big of a Canvas fan, <laughs> and she's saying we should schedule these monthly video chats with Brian. So Brian, I'm just putting the invite out there. <laughs> monthly streams with Cat, Ryan, Brian, and Jen. I'm calling it out right now. Lauren is on the line and she's like, no, Mark, no, we can't do that. We're doing something the next few months. I, we, we've been working on this for a long time uh, and it's been, been a, a lot of feedback going to it. So I can't promise we'll have as big of announcements every month like, like this, um, as this is a, a, a really big um, integration we're working on together with, with Canvas. But we do have CanvasCon online coming up October 15th, and there is a, a good likelihood you will see Brian's face uh, in at least something there, so be prepared. Indeed. Yep, there there will be a webinar, I think it's later this month, so keep your eyes peeled for that information. I'm sure Mark will be sharing it. Um, so Brian, Brian, you will see his face again, and soon, I think. <laughs> Looking Brian, forward. sometimes when I'm on this kind of thing, I think Ryan probably gets the same feedback. Me and him, they're kind of like, you have a face for radio. I'm like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> you, what they're telling us is you don't, Brian. They want to see that face here again. More Brian. <laughs> okay, with that, I mean, again, here's Winnie saying, amen, monthly. They want you back. <laughs> Brian is the LeBron James and Taylor Swift of Google right I now. I feel like Brian are going to have their own show. It's just going <laughs> to... I'll have I'll more questions, Brian. I'm up, I'm up for it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Kat, for your support as well as Canvas. And um, also looking forward to seeing um, what, I, what I expect to be a surge of installations and usage um, today and the rest of this month. So I'm really looking forward to, to all the extra feedback as well. Yeah. Awesome. But again, give us that feedback. We love it. And th I, this audience has been amazing. Like, super involved. Lots of questions. Thanks, everybody, for this. This shows us we're doing the right thing when we get this much uh, positive feedback, so we appreciate it. Hey, Brian, maybe if you could pass on to some of your YouTube friends over at Google that this good friend of ours says that we are we are her favorite YouTubers. So I don't know, maybe hook the algorithm up in our favor or something. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We're back again tomorrow morning at 1030. Look throughout the day on social uh, for more updates and things about this, this Google news. I know that Google's pushing some stuff out later this afternoon that we'll be sharing. We're back tomorrow morning at 1030 Mountain with another session that you're not going to want to miss. It's not Brian. It's not Kat. It's not, Jen, it's not Ryan. But sadly, you'll see my face again. I'm sorry. 1030 AM tomorrow. We'll see you. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you all. Bye-bye.